Well, I should I should introduce you. Let's do this formally. Um, I am here with Mark Andes, bass player and founding member of Spirit and Jojo Gun, and a former member of Heart throughout the 80s big hair heyday that they had. Uh, and of course, a founding member of Firefall, uh, which we'll be talking about most of all today, because they just released a new album called Comet. And that is the first album in more than 20 years. Wow. So uh, yeah, Mark Andes, thanks so much for being here. It's great. Oh, my pleasure, Scott. This is great. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, did you know you retired in 1972? That's what I hear. <laughs> I retired? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard that Mark Andes retired in, in 1972. Uh, <laughs> everything I read says you retired in 1972. Oh, huh, that's interesting. Cause yeah, it really is. I, 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 Maybe it's a different Mark Andes. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I was um, 72. We were just getting fired. I mean, uh, JoJo Gunn going. Mm -hmm. now, of course, I only did the first record and the first tour and then was fired by my own band, by my own brother and my best friend, Jay Ferguson, yeah. which still pisses me off. But um, yeah, and then um, moved. It was funny because I was got my feelings so hurt after being just summarily let go uh, in kind of a not a cool way. I picked up my stuff from Topanga. I said, I'm out of here. Get, I had my girlfriend and her daughter and the three of us got in a, uh, the Applewood Baptist Church bus that a, a friend of mine owned, picked up, packed all our hippie uh, belongings and my instruments. And we, I knew one family in Colorado, the, uh, Bud and Marilee Gorenson, and uh, they put us in touch with uh, some really wonderful people. And I was able to restart my thing yet again. And, uh, and it led to, I'd known Chris Hillman uh, from the LA days, uh, from the birds and the spirit days. Uh, we had his first wife, Jeannie, was uh, the best friends with my first live-in girlfriend, Terry Stewartson. And, and so I got, I, I knew Chris from those days. Wow. And then the funny thing about my whole uh, leaving uh, LA in a big huff going, I'm going to leave this place. It's just, a, it's child jive and people are, it's, it's cold. And, you know, I mean, people are, are can be horrible to one another and Blah, 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 blah. Well, it, little did I know that as I was moving there, everybody else was, still was Neil Young, <laughs> a neighbor in, in Topanga. And it was so hilarious. And I, I got there and I went, oh, man, is, everybody's moved here. So anyway, it worked yeah. out great. But Chris was sort of, a, he, his, we were promoting his, it was a solo record that had just come out. So we were playing some gigs uh, to get a band together for him uh, in Colorado. And he put together this band that include Jock Bartley, Rick Roberts. So in a way, Chris's band really became the nucleus for Firefall, basically. That is cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and I have to ask you with this new album, um, in the beginning of you, well, you just released way back when the video, uh, new single, um, and it starts with you talking about the comparisons, the similarities of that turbulent '60s time and what we're going through now. And you know, I told my kids the same thing. I said, "This is like the '60s all over again." You know, we're just redoing the whole thing. Um, but you end by saying that you hope music will make things better. Um, is that, you know, it's been more than 20 years since you guys made music. Uh, what made you come together now? Uh, is that part of the reason, you know, we need you, you know, we need music. Well, it was an interesting journey. Of course, I was the first original guy to leave the band in 80. So uh, when uh, Ken Kinnear, Hart's manager took over the job of uh, managing Heart, I, I mean, uh, Firefall, I, I, I felt like the band was in good hands. 
I'm not so sure that they were, but uh, you know, <laughs> felt like it at the time. <laughs> but at the time, I said, "Okay, you guys, I have to, I have to go," and I don't, won't go into the details. But it was just time for me. I could see that that Firefall was kind of, um, kind of, it preventing itself from being as successful as we could have been. Right, mm -hmm. just a lot of dysfunction and a lot of bad habits going on and. I just did this, the same thing in reverse. I said, well, see you guys. I packed up this, the same family, <laughs> only with my son. And we made the same trip, not on a bus, but maybe it was a bus, the same bus. But we moved back and my mom was living in Venice, a beach area. So I, we moved to Playa del Rey. And then I started uh, doing gigs. I was with an, a great band with Tim Goodman, who wound up being in uh, su uh, uh, Southern Pacific with John McPhee. John McPhee produced a killer record for Tim. So I got to meet uh, McPhee. Uh, this was before he got, it was in the doobies. And um, I, I think it was before he was in the, I'm not sure about that. But anyway, I, th then I think I was rehearsing with Tim's band and then I saw, the uh, the Howard had, was apparently rehearsing in the same place, different time. I gave him the note, and so it was it, right, it, right. kind of just all. So yeah, I did not did not retire. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say not. <laughs> You've been a busy guy for many many years. It's, it's pretty kind of great. amazing, really, without a, a a manager or a you know I. It's been, a, in retrospect, it's been a very interesting life because I've <clears throat> just sort of been led along. And I, music is is the, the my God, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and the it's so precious to me that I've kind of let that be my guide. And it's it's led me to where I needed to be. Yeah, that's pretty here. I don't know. I don't that's know. pretty but, amazing. But I, I'll, it, it, and I, I'm, not, I'm not being really, I mean that literally as far as, because to me, you know how <clears throat> sports guys and musician guys, you can tell when somebody's in the zone, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And they're playing and, and it's, they're so in the moment or, or, or an athlete is just on it. That's called what I, I'm calling that in the zone. Mm -hmm. And it occurred to me not long ago, that, and I've been doing this, what, 55 years? I, I started in bands at 65 or something. Yeah. I was 66 was in Canned Heat and, you know, the spirit thing. Right. And I thought, well, I've been in, lucky enough to be in the zone out of, from all that time, maybe three, two or three weeks of, of that high level. And I, it's like a meditation. It's like, a, it's yeah. such a, connection with that with your source or something so it's the just the the aggregate sum of all that work and all of those notes and being lucky enough to be in the zone may you know maybe uh, two or three times a month maybe for <laughs> little moments it, it's just keep me going i'm i'm it, it's really uh, my what's it's what fills my soul up Ah, that's beautiful and it's and you know for sharing that with the world i mean these songs have changed our culture uh it's changed the lives of so many people you know uh, my you know my life wouldn't be the same without those songs um uh, you know so many songs that you, that you've given us it's pretty special well it's but it's been i've just been a part of the the collective which is also a, a, another benefit to me and my development because I'm a team guy. So it's all about connecting, but yeah, yeah. So that's, but I think that, so Jock, <clears throat> I've been doing uh, sessions work in uh, <clears throat> Houston at this legendary studio called uh, Sugar Hill Studios. Met this, uh, th these great guys, T Kenny Cordray, amazing guitarist cool rhythm section and we did many many recordings for 
know, like three or four years, had a little, you know, local band here in the Houston area. And I just, <clears throat> I kind of, I just kind of got to the other side of it. And just as I was starting to think about, okay, what's next? What do I, what do I want to do? I got a call from Jock. He said, you know, our Bill Hopkins, our, my longtime bass guy is uh, retiring from, from uh, Firefall. Would you want to uh, play some shows? And I said, you know, I would, I would like, I would like that. I just getting out and playing live for for starters right. and not be uh, uh, in a local thing, which was not getting me off. Um, I thought, well, let, no, let's do this. And so that that's where it started. So he asked me to <clears throat> come in, do some shows, see how it fit would, you know, and then go from there. And of course it worked. It, it worked out really well. David, uh, the, the three original guys, Jock, of course, who never left. Mm -hmm. uh, David, who's come and gone several times. He was with the Marshall Tucker band for uh, many years. I'm not sure of the time frame. We were all back and, and those guys were playing better than ever. And uh, I thought, yeah, this is good. And I'm getting to play my old parts, all the parts that I made up in the seventies, I'm, I'm revisiting and I had the latitude to, uh, we just kind of deconstructed the whole firefall thing and, and put it together in a way that was really true to the song. But when it would kind of open up into the solo sections, we became this kind of a jam band that we started out being right. before we got signed and we would just play and jam and it, it was, it, so it, it, it's been really gratifying to see the change and see people's reaction and the conversational soloing between David Muse and Jock and how the, the whole vibe, it's pretty cool. It is really cool. Yeah. It, I, and I had my doubts, you know, that it, it hit my desk. And I have to tell you, honestly, I, you know, I said to myself, it's been more than 20 years. And, you know, I mean, how much heart is in this, you know? Um, is it just getting together to just to do something or, you know, is, is there gonna be heart and soul and emotion in this? And, uh, you know, how tight is the band? I thought, you know, uh, so I, I was interested to hear and I put it on and I was like, wow, this is just probably the best Firefall record that I, I've heard, honestly. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's, it's really really tight it's really uh it, it's got peaks and valleys you know the, the sequencing is fantastic um you know with that centerpiece of like there she is uh you know that positive high energy kind of thing but then it it just goes lower it goes you know i mean it's just a it's a beautifully orchestrated album oh well thank that's means a lot coming from you man i appreciate yeah. it very thank much. you thank you um you finished the album in November of 2019, if I'm correct, um, but you've delayed the, the release uh, because of COVID um, and it got released in, on December 11th, I believe, 2020. Um, have you been working in that time period? Uh, do you have maybe a follow-up, uh, more, more songs written? Well, I don't personally, I, uh, I haven't really, written anything for a, a while and mm -hmm. but i know that uh well i i really i know that gary jones the, the uh lead, lead singer guy has been on a roll and he's been uh, recording a solo record in nashville um and it i don't know that i don't know i mean yeah. it, it, okay. it, it, you didn't it, record anything more than uh what's on the album there might have been a track or two that we did not use, but I think it started with Nature's Way. We um, really, when, yeah. When when uh, Jock asked me to, to get back involved, and it, it occurred to me just by that that 
Firefall, you know, really the family tree that cre created Firefall is pretty legendary on its on itself. Mm -hmm. And I thought, God, it, you know, it'd be good to kind of share with the audience where how this came about and where the branches and the tap roots and all of the, you know, the plant analogy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it comes from and and so it that led to doing uh we would do uh got a line on you for a for an encore and then follow it up with uh, so you want to be a rock and roll star so okay. that just would give the audience a little taste that well here's some of the history mm -hmm. and then we started to, to do nature's way live and i i, I was a little insecure about my lead singing singing chops, but I, I thought, well, I could do this. And, you know, we rearranged it so that I could sing it, you know, and uh, we had lowered the key, obviously. So, it, but it wound up getting such a good response. It was kind of a surprise that people would just freak out over that, that song. So yeah. it occurred to, us that, you know, the one of the things that the that groups that play on our tier of success, you know, meet and greet and selling merch is a big part of your payday. Yeah. I mean, that's the that's the truth of it. And we thought, well, God, if we were to make uh, like a, a an extended plays CD of maybe three or four or five songs or something and then we maybe do three of those and then we'd have maybe a best of then we could you know sell sell merch it'd be right. added to our merch so it, it was not a, a real grand scheme but just a well let's go in and, and cut some things and of course one of the songs that we had pretty much worked out that was already getting a good response was nature's way so that was mm -hmm. uh one of the first things we we cut and um no one real really anticipated that it would take four years to really finish the record because it, it right. did we we did have to learn how to uh coalesce and really get our blends and and it, well, it, to, to do the work that you just complimented which is really getting our, our, ourselves really tight in the studio, which is right. not the same thing as being uh, doing a really good live show. To, right. to have that translate into a studio setting where the, the, uh, every little detail and every little inflection is way in your face. So you, it has to be good. Right. So it, it, the idea then quickly shifted, well, we're just gonna have to see how long this takes and um we they initially thought it was going to take a real short period of time and they said god good get uh, nature's way done and my friend uh robert mcintee uh produced the, the the track and we cut my vocals at his studio in austin and uh, uh timothy schmidt was playing with his solo band uh, he had a killer lineup of, of great musicians. And um, I had just come in from a Firefall show and they were playing their, their last night. So I went uh, pretty much straight away to the club and said my, said my hellos because John McPhee was playing and our, my friend Hank Linderman, who has produced some uh, records that I'd played on. So I knew people and Right. Went up to the dressing room. Timothy wasn't hanging out with the band. He was kind of off. And the uh, the the, the multi-instrumentalist of the band, they start playing Nature's Way, man. Really? Just, wow. Just spontaneously. And the, 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 there was a, the three uh, background singers, these beautiful, very soulful ladies. And the... the uh, I, I, I forgive me for not remembering the, the Beach Boy guys who was their musical director at that time. Oh, wow. Just did this beautiful version. And I, and I said to Hank uh, Linderman, uh, the uh, kind of the, the Timothy's musical director, 
Mm -hmm. Do you think that uh, Timothy would be okay if I asked him if he would maybe sing Nature's Way with me, Firefalls Cutting It? And, and I, I didn't want to re really redo Nature's Way with anybody uh, for a long time, but I thought, well, Firefall, this is, this is probably a good time. And it came when <clears throat> the, the, the uh, Led Zeppelin spirit thing had been settled and yeah. it, it kind of went that, the direction of Led Zeppelin. And I thought, what a cool little personal way we could honor Randy, do it in a kind of a low key, subtle way. And I, and I pitched uh, Timothy uh, like that. I said, you know, would you sing the second verse and maybe the harmonies and, um, and he said he would love to. And I said, man, uh, thank you, awesome. bro. Because he was, he was in, a, a kid in Sacramento coming to spirit gigs uh, as a kid. Oh, cool. That's and, wait, so cool. and, and, and then Hank goes, well, you better ask McPhee. <laughs> Because <clears throat> he might get upset if you don't. <laughs> then it came together and we had this, not only these wonderful guests, but a killer version of the song. Yep. And then it just took a long time for the rest of the album to kind of come through and uh, get good. Wow, that's cool that it started that way. Uh, that the, you know, the song is so special on the album for a number of reasons. Uh, you know, it's it's the one song that you sing, which is really great and it's unique uh, to the album. Um, but you know, we got Timothy B. Schmidt. I mean, <laughs> you know, the 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 voice and the you know, I mean, on a lot of Firefall, uh, just remember, I love you. Those beautiful ultra high harmony. That's Timothy. So. Right. It was, and what I like about the whole new song thing is that the first song that, that the band uh, recorded was not a, not a new song. It right. Was from the 60s. So it, it was kind of a, a kind of a d double whammy. You know, we go back to the future or something. Right, right. Right. It's cool that it, that it started that way, uh, you know, because uh, the new songs are, are fantastic. Uh, they're just so, so well written. And and like I said, the, the band sounds great. Um, do you ever feel I, I know you, you don't really write um, and, you know, there's a, a limited writing group. Do you ever feel a disconnect with anything? Uh, you know, like they bring the song in and. You know, like say you wouldn't actually go in that direction. Is there, you know, just a matter of playing it, or uh, is there input? Any ever feel a disconnect? Well, I, I would say that not really, because you know, a, a song is presented and it's it's a topic of discussion. So it's like, okay, what, where do we want to go with this? How do we, how, how do we feel about playing it? And I have a lot of latitude uh, in the band just because I've, I've, I've wrote all the original parts from all those records. So um, my, my street credibility is pretty good. <laughs> and I have written a bunch of, you know, uh, the first spirit single was a song that I wrote, Mechanical World. Right, right. The first single that I was, uh, I wrote, uh, How Can I Refuse for Heart off Passion Works. So I, it's not like I'm not a writer, and, but I am a pretty dang good, uh, and occasionally a song or a part of a music uh, pieces of songs come to me. Uh, so I've got that going. So, but I'm my arrangement skills and my uh, mm -hmm. sense of, uh, melody and counter melody and harmonies and stuff is is pretty intact and and uh, so uh, I would guess I would say that when a song and not that's not to say that every song that gets uh, presented is you like <laughs> right. I mean there there is that but typically you know you can make you can make pretty much anything really work if you if you don't have a, a premeditated agenda, you know, if, if the song, I guess what uh, has really 
serve me well is the song rules basically right. that right. is what we're talking about that's the coin of the realm right and if you really go down the rabbit hole of that song then it reveals itself and to, and pretty much a, a group like firefall everybody kind of feels it in a in a similar way so it comes out cohesive yeah and that's uh, and having that latitude is great um cuz you know i mean you can be you uh, which is really, you know, you don't have a chart to play. Um, you don't have something that you might not like uh, to, to have that latitude and, and do what feels comfortable to you inside of that song. And, you know, it's always to playing for the song. You know, you have to, uh, you know, and to be self-indulgent is usually not a, a recipe for success. Uh, <laughs> um, do you have a favorite song on the record? Well, I love the way Nature's Way came out, <clears throat> but I think Way Back When is really, really a great opener. It's got the tribute to the the uh, in our influences and our roots, because I mean, Michael was in the birds and he was the drummer originally. <clears throat> so I'd say Way Back When and, and Nature's Way, oh, they, but uh, Hardest Chain is good. There's mm -hmm. some like you said, man, there's some really good songs and it's not uh, one dimensional. I, I, I like that aspect of, about it, too, that it really it goes places. That's that's just it. That's what I found the most. Uh, it really does move. There's a lot of movement to it. Uh, and I didn't expect that, I, honestly. Uh, you know, I expected maybe to for you guys to be trying to write just remember i love you again uh and that's not what it is uh you know there are songs similar and, and in that same vein but you can tell that this is a you know you guys are interested in these songs uh you're not really interested in rehashing the old you know the, uh, the same song 10 times that's exactly. but i have to also say that <clears throat> jock was very intent on making this um records sound like a firefall record mm -hmm. so, it, so so i what you just said to your point is that's a high compliment because it's it could be easily been tempting to just kind of redo you know kind of get do the same old stuff and right you know but it, it it didn't go that way but the intent was to make it sound like a like a firefall record so i have to hand it to uh, jock um he really had a vision and he had a, a great idea for the uh, lyrics to uh, way back when with the dates and uh you should have him tell you the story <clears throat> about googling the hit records of uh 65 or you know the whatever the dates of the song fit it that. into the lyric <laughs> yeah exactly because yeah. there was his narrative that all these songs it was you know, Aretha and, and the yeah. Rascals, and it that spoke to him, and he was able to craft, I think, a really catchy, yet um, a real evocative song that, that does what uh, we talked about earlier, which is sort of acknowledge the the, the similarities and the contrast to the '60s and what we're going through now. It was like a musical uh, version of telling that story. You know? Yeah, it really is, and it's really it's fun to listen to to hear those those names come up and and uh, and the like. It's it's really it's a fun song. It really is. Um, now, Jock produces this album. You've been like in spirit. You had Lou Adler. I mean, you know, legend. Um, Tom Dowd with Jojo Gunn, Ron Nevison, uh, who was great to talk to, uh, Richie Zito, uh, who Howard, I know, loved on the Brigade album with Hart. Uh, and you had Jim Mason early on in Firefall. These are all outside producers. Um, Jock produces this album. D did you feel, yeah, what's the, what are the differences, the, the advantages, disadvantages of an actual member of the band producing the album as opposed to somebody else? Well, 
it started with with uh, nature's way and <clears throat> basically uh robert mcintee and i produced that okay so that sort of set the tone you could say uh so everything that kind of followed uh nature's way sort of i think that sort of set the bar at a pretty high level and we had to um make it work from there because we knew that that that, that song was going to be an, an important i mean it got it, it it got airplay when it was when it was they shoved it out to to uh to get it out there right away and people responded very well to in radio and, and we were very surprised you know fireball getting you know airplay on radio <laughs> and it's two thousands what's what's going on and so had we known that the record was going to take so long to uh complete we might not have uh, released it that quickly but i think uh the the way that the sound of how nature's way came out uh, spoke to how to jock and how he wanted to uh, approach the rest of the record on a production level but we had i have you know I mean, I was arranging vocals and, you know, I mean, everybody it was a hands on deal. It's, uh, it's yeah. not like Jock just told us what to do or anything, you know, it was, it was very um, uh, collaborative. Okay. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm always hesitant when I see credits on the album and I'm a, I'm a liner notes guy back in the day, you know, uh, spent hours and hours reading through liner notes. Um, you know, as a writer to the song, yeah, I mean, you, you're playing your parts on these songs, so I, you know, I, I consider that part writing of the song, uh, much like the producing, you know, if you have hand in that, then, uh, you know, it's a, it's a collaborative thing, um, it's, it's a thing of beauty, uh, when you get guys in a room that, uh, are all playing to the song and in the zone, uh, you know, magic happens. Well said, yeah. well said magic happens um the whole the, the whole stare to heaven Taurus thing what did, did, did you do have an, any opinion on on that whole take oh sure yeah um <clears throat> it started with an interview that i gave uh this and i got it i it, the guy it, the silver was la his last name and he wrote he asked if he could uh, come to my home he was, uh, he's an American guy, but he was living in Italy at that time. And he was do, writing uh, for Bloomberg News about uh, music or uh, about me, but he wanted to, to get uh, my take on that topic. And, and he uh, brought, I didn't have the book, but I actually did an interview with, uh, Denny Somach, can you see? Is, is it is it reversed? Uh, no, I, yeah, it's not. I can I can read that. Yeah, get the let out. Get the let out, and it's a book uh, that documents every nicked, uh, plagiarized uh, song that Led Zeppelin ever did, and he goes through the timeline where Spirit played and w w in what time frame and. Of course, I you know I was there. I'm remembering it. So I go, yeah, pretty much. That's how it happened. You know, first gig that they ever did was in Denver, and they opened the show for Spirit and the Vanilla Fudge. You know, and he we he plays the uh, the interview that uh, Denny did with um, oh I'm blank. Somebody from Zeppelin? It, no, no, no. It was it, it's the guy with the with the very famous radio show. Is he's curly had a guy. He was the he was a judge, uh, Howard Stern. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> so the, the the whole topic of that show on the Howard Stern show is is Denny just running this whole thing down and and playing certain examples. You know, like Led Zeppelin playing Fresh Garbage and yeah. It, and I, I turned and I ha had a, a lawyer who did some pro bono stuff with when Hart didn't uh, induct 
yeah, Denny Carmassi and I into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame um, didn't did not include us, uh, they, but they were still using our photos and you know our likeness to promote that that their big that era, yeah. That, well, they, yeah, and and the, the, their success of finally being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which they totally deserve to be, but so do Denny and I. Mm -hmm. um, I got a hold of uh, Francis Malafi, and he uh, is a lawyer, and and I said, you know, would you write just a letter, uh, you know, cease and desist or something, just to let them know that that's not cool. You know, we should be right. there. And for them to still be using, our, I said, that's really, just send a message. And of course, I, we knew nothing was gonna change anything, but, which he did, but he took me aside. He said, but the, you know, the, the lawsuit that I really want, want to get into with you, so if you, whenever you're ready, <laughs> it was the, is the issue between Taurus and the intro to Stairway to Heaven. And I said, check. So the interview happens, I th this I'm seeing the timeline and the whole thing is going boing boing. boing. I said, okay, Francis, you, I the guy. I think you got. I got something for you. And I I in my naive thinking, I thought well, I could bring the suit. And I thought, well, you know, it's Rand Randy's estate would have benefited had Randy gotten credit. But but, but I wanted Randy to to get credit. Back in the day, that was his, the only song that Randy wrote on the first Spirit record was Taurus. Yeah. And I let, Jay and I left the group and, and, and I, everybody knew that Led Zeppelin sort of borrowed Taurus for their thing. And, and I, I didn't- And everything it. else. <laughs> and, and, and many other, <laughs> but it was Randy's song, I had moved on, you know, but, but then Randy's gone. Uh, the the I felt if there is a time, uh, if I don't make something happen like now, it won't ever happen. Randy will never get the credit that he was. And as a, as it turns out, he did not get uh, official credit. But 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 it was successful as as Randy's friend. Randy was able to tell his side of the story because he had done interviews. He, you know, uh, the, the, the whole protracted suit and the attention that it got just showed if, if people were interested, they could have, they, they, they could have read articles that Randy had given, you know, interviews, you know, saying, God, oh, you know, they could have at least thanked me, you know. Right. Um, and I thought, well, Let's do this. As it turned out, I could not bring the suit. And it, it was uh, the executor of Randy's estate was the only person that could bring the suit, Mick Skidmore. And he, a uh, great guy, Mick. And he did the stand up thing and took, said, yep. And uh, I think Francis got a little out lawyer because the jury never really got to hear Spirit's performance. It was this right. funky, uh, the deposit copy of uh, which uh, Barry Hansen, uh, an another uh, music doctor guy, uh, Dr. Demento, it's, and somehow, you know, he yes. just did this really crude, very, it doesn't sound like Taurus at all, but it was just to get the, the, the copyright. But it, ironically, the, the song was published when, when we recorded this, the album, the first record. Right. So it was already a done deal. So uh, it was a kind of a, a moot point. Had we been sharp enough uh, on our legal team, we would have been able to say, no, 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 no. This is the published version. This is what the uh, jury should hear. Right. And had that happened, the, the things could have been different. But yeah. It yeah. Was, it's what it is. And I'm, I'm good with it. I, I give it a good sure. shot. Francis really worked so hard on it and uh we just came up short but i think that i think that they uh they borrowed it yeah. and uh, the, vo yeah. the, the vocal melody that uh rock what robert sings of the of the uh da -da 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 -da, 
is, is the beginning of, of John Locke's harpsichord solo. So it, it's, they, they definitely borrowed yeah. it. And it's all good. I love the song. I'm a fan of Led Zeppelin's. I mean, hell. Right. I mean, I think not we fun. all are, right? Um, there, I, you know, I always say to, to the the guys I work with, you know, they're they're the greatest cover band ever, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know, and that's kind of you know every song is is pulled from somewhere, uh, just about, you know. I mean, some of my favorite Zeppelin songs are covers. Yeah, or almost every single one of them. And 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 that's not uncommon in, in popular music. I mean little uh motifs that get circulated and how many uh songs are i mean when i was growing up uh uh like richie valens ode like donna i mean you know c a minor f g i mean there were like dozens and dozens of songs with that that very same uh chord progression so right it's 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 common but this was I think that what what really stands out is that the mood that Randy wanted to to get to in the recorded version it had Marty Page's beautiful string things and it just gorgeous created this ethereal kind of mood and that's what uh, Led Zeppelin created and they juxtaposed it with this wonderful building uh, to where the thing is just crazy huge of course randy's uh taurus just stays in that beautiful little area <clears throat> so you know randy didn't write stairway to heaven no doubt no. He helped uh jimmy write the intro uh, yeah. So. oh yeah no doubt about it no doubt about it but as long as, you know when, on that zeppelin thing when you know the more i researched as I was growing up, I grew up with those songs. As I grew up, I started researching and going back to the old blues guys and, you know, the Willie Dixon stuff. And, and I'm thinking, you know, you need love is a whole lot of love. I mean, it's, they're yeah. the same song, uh, you know, in my time of dying, one of my favorite Zeppelin songs this is not a Zeppelin song, <laughs> you know, uh, there's so many, I mean, there's all of these great Zeppelin songs that I love so much. Who was are, the Folk got that that uh, wrote. I forget that here, but I forget the name of the song. But her son is listening to a, a, a Led Zeppelin record, and he goes, "Mom, you didn't tell me that uh, Led Zeppelin wrote, uh, recorded a song of yours, <laughs> <laughs> really." And that was one of the first uh, plagiarism cases that got resolved, and she got paid. Yeah. Yeah, they've given out quite a quite a bit of uh, cash, I think, over the years with those kinds of lawsuits. And uh, you know, I was watching the the Spirit lawsuit, uh, you know, fairly closely. And uh, I I don't know how they you know. Well, I think not hearing the song is, is a major component. Um, when you hear them, you know, I've played it for people that you know know Stairway to Heaven but don't know Taurus, and I play Taurus and they're like wow that's identical um so um complete the sentence for me i wouldn't be a musician if it weren't for link ray mm, wow rumble. link yeah. ray's rumble fantastic that yeah. big influence oh man and it it's it spoke to me my my i grew up in uh my dad was an actor. My brother and I, uh, we were just around show business people, you know, since before we were born, dancers and actors. And they, uh, so we just were receptive to, the, to uh, all kinds of music. But when we got introduced to rock and roll, it was pre Beatles. It was way before. It was before surf music, really, because you know it was. I was about well. I was ten years old when Rumble came out. And that came out in nineteen fifty eight. I was I was born in forty eight, and I heard this kind of just this. It wasn't a, a crazy. You know how you know down down 
then back, back. I mean, right. it's kind of laid back, but the the sound had this kind of menacing thing. Of course, it got banned because rumble meant a street fight, you know, and right. and there was there was concern that it might incite some violence or something. So, uh, I know how times have changed. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But but, but the the. The punchline is it was this big badass sound, but it was such a simple song to play that my brother and I could figure it out. We had some piano lessons and we had some stringed instruments around the house, zither, and you know, we were curious and making sounds with these things. And we got a hold of a, a couple of acoustic guitars and we were able to kind of figure that one out and then it was game on and then we started uh, then my uh, high school cover band we did uh, you know money and you know uh, right. lots of instrumentals and we just we went from there so but that's that's what started it yeah it was one of the ones you know uh, yeah. walk don't run was uh, you know the love adventures and the astronauts you know uh the the, the Apache, uh, Jordan Ingram, Ingram, I think it was, it was like a, a, a European guy. I mean, there was a whole generation of uh, rock instrumentals pre uh, Dick Dale, you know, and right. pre, and then the, the Beach Boys, and there, then there was the surf sound. Uh, but I always liked Little Richard. I thought Little Richard had, he had that, uh, and I love Richie Valens because he grew up in the San Fernando Valley too, just uh, in San Fernando, actually. <clears throat> so uh, uh, La Bamba and Donna and all those, I mean, that, wow. Yeah, legendary stuff, legendary stuff. Ray, uh, yeah. I, I, I would have to finish that sentence with Link Ray, man. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I remember talking to Howard about, uh, you know, his influences and um, he said Dick Dale was the first uh, the concert that he saw and uh it, it blew him away you know he's he's always loved dick dale so yeah it's pretty cool um i've had the time of my life i'm having the time of my life here uh it, you're so gracious such a wonderful human being and you've done so much for me as a as a person with your music uh i don't want i want to respect your time i know we've been a while now um i don't <laughs> thank you so much um out of all the music you've made you've done so much in your career uh so many wonderful bands and wonderful music what has been the most enjoyable for you what you know what uh is the you know the one project that you've just it was home for you well i did a solo record of instrumentals of God, it was in 2009. I was leaving just about to move out from, uh, from Austin. And it was a bunch of so songs that I, I had, had written that never found a home. So it's called, uh, let me see. It's called Real World Magic. And I had so much fun. This is kind of a, a, a placard from it but okay kind of what it looks like. but i had so much fun i played everything except for the drums i had a, a great producer a guy really helped me uh navigate it but it's it's a lot of acoustic guitar uh and, and i played electric and acoustic and percussion it would i had so much fun doing that and it made me it kind of um Help me kind of honor the good, the good musical ideas that I thought were worthy of being turned into proper songs with a with a mel right. lyric and a melody that never really that never did. So that was that was a gratifying thing, and it's kind of way out. And I I, I only have a few copies of it left, but uh, it, it, give me your. Uh, address uh or, or, or we're, we're you, you've got my email yeah yeah i'll drop you an email. copy 
I would absolutely love that. Yeah, man, that's so kind. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, and you know that's what I think. That's the mu magic of music, really. Uh, it's personal. You know, it's 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 where you feel at home. It's it's what what is pleasing to you and and your emotions, your heart. Uh, what what's in it for you? Um, and uh, yeah, that's got to be a special special record. Well, it it, it is to me because it. And you're right. It's about aesthetics, man. I mean, it has to has to like you mean something and and i think that's one of the things that i've been lucky to find is is like-minded people that care and really want the same goal want, want the same outcome you know yeah yeah do you have anything uh you know all these years of doing this and and so many wonderful things is there anything that uh, you want to accomplish, you know, that tops on the bucket list kind of thing? It's been pretty rewarding. I mean, I was able, uh, the uh, whole rock stardom thing uh, eluded me for a long time. And I think that was one of the things that, you know, Jojo Gunn and even Firefall really, we didn't really ascend to rock stardom, but that decade with heart, I mean, I even got to do that one for 10 years. So, uh, and, and we had some really good, I mean, it was a killer band and we made some mm. excellent records. Yeah. Uh, we were as good live as we were in the studio. And, and I was a rock star in my, <clears throat> in my forties. Right, right. It was crazy. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. So the whole uh, irony was not lost on me. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's really cool, you know, and I've have, I have asked that of Howard, too, because, you know, you're behind the girls, and, you know, Hart is Anna Nancy. Yeah, uh, that's what people know as Hart. Uh, but I thought, you know, Howard, he's been there, he was there for 23 years or something, uh, you know, produced the first demo, you know, uh, he is that band in a lot of ways. Um, it's all started with him. Um and it's, uh, you know, I said, being behind them and, and not having that total spotlight um, after that many years, you know, did, and that never bothered him. You know, you, you guys had great times. It's a blessing. <laughs> it, 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 it's allowed guys, and I, I consider myself one of those guys too, that's, I'm a bass player for God's sake, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. I, I think it's enabled me to have this long, career where not being the center of attention is it allows me to kind of morph into various projects and not uh not be out of place yeah yeah and you know nobody uh nobody's writing horrible things about you in the tabloids either <laughs> yeah you know yeah and you can gain a little weight and nobody's gonna say anything or you know there's there's advantages you can go grocery shopping and you know exactly. not be bothered exactly you know so yeah very cool well mark it's the time of my life thank you thank you thank you thank you so much scott this is just re really been really special and it's same here thanks so much and uh yeah we'll be in touch uh, I, and i hope you guys can make it to the arcada or somewhere around chicago here uh you know i'd love to come see you and, and hang for a little bit and uh you know, enjoy uh the time that would be wonderful oh dude let's uh, let's make it happen let's get vaccinated let's get this yep. horrible virus out of our lives and <clears throat> move forward and and i'm going to be doing this as long as is I can do this at a high level. I I don't plan I I, I plan on continuing. Uh, and when I start to falter and I'm not I'm not playing uh, where to my standards, then I'll pull I'll pull my own plug. You know, right, right. right. <laughs> but I don't plan on being around for a while yet. I'm I'll be 73 later this month, so you know. It's awesome, man. You look great and uh you back at you, bro. Doing great and uh that's that's so cool. And this is a great album that people need to hear. Uh this Firefall Comet album. Go get it, go stream it, do whatever you gotta do. Uh it's it's a piece of magic, no doubt. It it, it, 
it means so much having you say that it really it really does it really is and it means so much for you to make it and all all the great music over the years i we appreciate you all right brother all right i'll be in touch and uh yeah I'm, let's i'm gonna send you that see i'm gonna need a mailing address so. okay yeah I'll, I'll send you an email and uh yeah we'll keep in touch all right thanks Thank so much mark all right, have a great day bye-bye